Drag queen nuns disinvited from baseball event after Catholic backlash. The baseball field is no stranger to curveballs, and the Los Angeles Dodgers recently threw one that's ignited a debate. Buckling under pressure from Catholic and conservative groups, the LA Dodgers abruptly disinvited the colorful drag queen charitable organization known as the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence from their upcoming LGBT Pride Night. The sisters, infamous for their satire of the Catholic Church, yet applauded for their vast community service, were initially lauded as honorees. Uh, <laughs> critics like Senator Marco Rubio and Catholic League President, President Bill Donahue, spurred the Dodgers' stunning about face with accusations of anti-Catholic bigotry. <laughs> but this isn't a... <laughs> But the, the 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 LGBT community has some major pushback, and the LA LGBT Center and the ACLU of Southern California are threatening to boycott the Pride event unless the Dodgers reinvite the sisters back into the event. So I wanted to talk about this because I am a huge fan of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are some of the coolest nuns in the world, okay? Like, we have drag queens, and then we have nuns. And then we have legit drag queen nuns. And the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, they were started in 1979 in San Francisco. And they have, you know, like... So for me, like, they were a part of my life, right? Like, the, the sisters were actually a part of the communities that I was in. And I know them. I would meet them. I would see them at the events that I'd go to. I'd see them out doing their volunteerism, seeing them doing their charity. And they're one of the most incredible organizations I've ever encountered. Um, so they're like, Orman, can you scroll down so we can see some pictures of the sisters? Because they have, like, a very... Yes, singular look. So it's like, okay, <laughs> actually, I put in this video of an um from the 80s. So actually, we we should watch this because it kind of explains what what they do and what they are better than probably I could. This is from the 60s? The, no, no, wow, that one okay. is from the 80s. Oh, 80s. Wow, that's like so they're they have a huge long history then. Since 1979. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, how are you today? I'm fabulous. Who is Sister Boom Boom and what does she stand for? Well, Sister Boom Boom is really Sister Rose of the Bloody Stains of the Sacred Robes of Jesus. <laughs> but that's okay. You can call me Boom Boom. I'm Wait, one you of the order of gay male nuns dedicated to... If there's anyone listening to this, this is an, an interview from like 1988. And it's this journalist interviewing... Oh, excuse me, 86, interviewing one of the sisters in front of San Francisco City Hall. <laughs> and she's sitting on a motorcycle while she talks to him. <laughs> this is so amazing. Right. Keep going. To the expiation of stigmatic guilt and the perpetration of universal joy. We're called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And we believe that God created a beautiful paradise for us to live in. And if we would all just enjoy the fruits of that garden, there'd be plenty for everybody to enjoy. And everyone could be happy. Yourself. Are you the Mother Superior? Oh, no, we don't have a mother superior. We elect officers in compliance with uh, the corporate laws of the state. We are a tax-exempt corporation. But, oh, excuse me, where are those cigarettes? Uh, I think you but, tucked them into your... Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we function basically as an anarcho-syndicalist convent. A what? Sister Boom Boom is not in the November election, so I don't see that that's relevant. I really look at uh, some of these quote, characters, uh, they wouldn't exist if the media didn't make a phenomenon out of them. Wow. So this is like who they are. They're like, they started as gay men and they have a very particular look where they do like a white face and then do very dramatic makeup on top of the white face, usually also bearded at the same time. So it's like a very, um, it's, it's playing into like the gender, well, I can't use language on youtube the gender f um tradition of drag and they um operate like a real order so when they're now they're global and 
when you want to join the sisters, you actually have to go through like a process. I can't remember what it's called, but it takes years to become a full sister in the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. You're not allowed to do the makeup until you are a fully fledged sister. And mm. it takes years of giving to your community before they allow you the honor of being able to do a full face like that. And their whole thing is the expiation of stigmatic guilt and the, what is it, like the per perpetuation of joy. So their whole thing is that they are here to throw off the guilt given to them primarily by the Catholic Church. That's why they're called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Because they're like, why should we mm. deny ourselves joy? We should still, mm. we should instead indulge in, in, these joys and these pleasures because we only have this life, you know, and um, they are some of the most incredible people I've ever met. So what happened was that they were going to be honored for their decades of volunteerism and contributions to our community um, at this Pride Night for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And when it was announced that they were going to be honored, there was this huge conservative Catholic backlash. Senator Marco Rubio came out against them. And the dude from the Catholic League, all this stuff said that they were anti-Catholic bigots. Because they're mocking and desecrating that which is like held sacred by Catholics, especially the nuns in particular. I don't understand how did they manage to get this invited? Like in this day and age, the between the Catholic Church and the LGBT, people still choose the Catholic Church sensitivities over the LGBT? I thought yes. we're past that. Yes. Well, they need to be crucified for this, in my opinion. Like where's yeah, well, there backlash? Why, yeah, like the L, uh, the LA LGBT Center, which is a huge organization in Southern California and also the ACLU of Southern California are threatening to boycott the entire event if there isn't, if the, if the sisters aren't invited back. And some people are saying that they should just cancel the event altogether. Well, how could they think they can get away with this? This is like, this is not Pakistan. This is not Iran. This is the United States. You can't just be big. You can't just be a bunch of homophobes and, in the name of religion, this invite like you, you, did they not expect a backlash? I don't understand. What was I the don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they expected a backlash. They made a statement where they are basically like, "Yeah, we didn't understand that this would be like such a huge controversy. Like, we apologize for any offense caused." Blah blah blah. Because part of what the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence do, they were founded on Easter Sunday, 1979, and every single Easter Sunday in Dolores Park in San Francisco. At, well, sometimes this is the park changes. Anyways, they have a hunky Jesus contest. <laughs> So what I would do every year is on Easter Sunday, I would go to the park and it would be a whole, f like the park, as far as you can see, there's like people and they're all in crazy costumes and they all go on stage and compete to be elected the sexiest Jesus. Who is the hunky Jesus? They have to <laughs> compete to win. The and then they started doing a... Uh, sexy Mary. So now there's also sexy Mother Mary, so women can participate too. That's right. See, this is why this best. is why I believe in our best. blasphemous art. This is why I see ourselves a part of when we do our blasphemous art, Susie. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the tradition. This is the tradition that I see us being part of. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I like this. By the way, anti-Catholic bigotry. Like, yeah. shut up. Shut. up. Up. you can't do that's like is that gonna fly shut the hell up you like how dare you like you guys have lost all battles when it comes to defending your insane ideology and now you're trying to hide behind this oh you know the, the modern world has realized that bigotry is bad and you're trying to co-op that and like just hide behind it. oh this is bigotry against catholic shut up shut yeah, up seriously you think bigotry is like making fun of your ideas like that's bigotry like that's not gonna fly that's not gonna fly nice try though 
nice try not but in the no. united states if you live if you were a christian like living i don't know somewhere like pakistan like you might have a case but here no <laughs> and yeah. armin one time i went to the hunky jesus contest and there was like it was <laughs> this is the best event in the world i love it so much there was a guy walking around. He looked like Jesus' little loincloth walking around the park, and he was gun control Jesus. And he was holding a sign that said, Shoot, come, not guns. <laughs> That's perfect. And we also perfect. had uh, sexy refugees. And there was a guy that was a refugee who was Jesus. He was from Puerto Rico. <laughs> but I, I yeah, it, it just, I don't know. This really kind of tickled me, especially because like the sisters are real, like they're not religious, right? Like I saw a comment from Asian American actually super chat. Thank you for the super chat saying not them tempting me to join Christianity. Like they're not Christian. <laughs> they're, mm. they're just like, no, it's joking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just to be clear, if people don't understand, like they're not actually Christian. This is just kind of their way of doing charity. And they, I mean, they do like safety patrols in the Castro district to like help prevent queer bashing. Like they do, um, they're famous for doing uh, hospice care for people with AIDS. Um and actually, can I show you a picture of when I went and met some of the sisters? Yeah. While you do that, can I add, uh, can you answer this question first as well? Mm -hmm. There's two things I want to add. Dark is saying, why was an invite to a baseball game the straw that broke the camel's back? I don't get it. I think because of the how much highlight, it wasn't just that they're being invited. I think it was them being aborted something, and it was making a big deal out of it, right? So it was putting them in a major highlight. So that was it, right? So yeah, they were receiving an award. Yeah. And also, Pakistani Defense Force. Hold on. Before you show anything, wait, I want to respond to this first. Pakistan Defense Force saying, Armin, so there is no way people can be bigots against Catholics? I did not say that, Pakistan Defense Force. What are you talking about? I did not say that. I said this is not an example of anti-Catholic bigotry. I come from Iran, where the government is bigoted against all forms of religion, including Catholics. That is not mainstream Shia Islam, the Layat Faqi version of Islam. What are you talking about? Why are you not listening to what I am saying and addressing what I'm saying? When did I say you can't be ca bigots against Catholics? I never... Oh my God, sometimes I lose my mind on this show. Of course you can. In every Islamic country, for example. Ega. All right. What do you have? This is me in college when they came to my religion class. The sisters came to my religion class. It was Oh my awesome. God, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> That's so amazing. <laughs> That's you. Why have you not changed? How old are you here? 22. Oh, okay. Why do you always look the same in all ages? <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't look yeah. different. She looks the same. Yeah, yeah, that's so cute. I can't, I wish I could remember their names. I remember her name was like something like Chiquita Chola or something because she was like a Chola. And mm. then this sister, she is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She, I mean, it's a man, but you know, her name in drag goes she. Anyways, um, mm. she did like hospice care for people who had no family who are basically just abandoned and like living in an old folks home by the state you know and, mm. and she was telling us when we visited when she, they came to give a talk to her class about how when she went to go to india she went to i think it was the ganges or like a very you know a, one of the holy rivers and she would go give medical care to like the dalits that were there on the shores because like no one else wanted to touch them and give them medical care mm -hmm. like that's very i don't nice. know they're the kind of people with like when you hear them talk about what they do like the level of selflessness just like shines mm. through right like a yeah. 
a real beacon of like giving and community mm. in like a really really real way and it was always like a dream of mine to join the sisters but it takes a long time like it's not something that you can just do um they're really like, wanna... like, real heroes yeah i just want to mention that um it's not a lot of people misunderstand the difference between drag and trans okay so susanna is not like misgendering uh, him when saying she's a, that he's a man because drag i know this is basic stuff but a lot of our audience might not know this being drag doing drag it doesn't necessarily mean you're trans you could be trans and do uh, perform as a drag queen and you could not you could completely be a cis straight male that likes to do drag so you could still be a man and identify as a man and also do drag so just wanted to clear that up because some people might think that you're misgendering him by saying that he's a man. No, no, um, no. But when someone's yeah. in drag, they're like as a character. Yep. And so you're supposed to dress, yes. dress that character accordingly. Yeah, while they're in drag. But like, that doesn't mean that their entire ident identity is necessarily a woman. Like they could yeah, yeah, be yeah. not. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.